Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. We're here with another replay from Aerocrastic. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, or maybe have been living under a rock or something, Aerocrastic is the current reigning uh, ever chosen champion. And he has started his own YouTube channel. He's been posting occasionally uh, battle reports, some in depth analysis, and some other, other very good very good content so I definitely recommend you guys check him out you'll find a link down in the description below today he's gonna to be taking on our other good friend Slade X who's taken an awesome Beastman build uh, Wood Elves versus Beastman very thematic matchup so let's get to it Orion leading the way we've got Eternal Guard, War Dancers, three units of Wild Riders spread across the field uh, we've also got two Dryads, two Deepwood Scouts and some Hawk Riders for the Beastman five units of Harpies which is a heavy air force for the beastmen. Uh, Sons of Goros, we've got more Centigors, uh, a couple Chaos Warhounds as well, no poison there. Uh, poison here though. Looks like we've got a whole line of Ungor Spearman Herd with shields, another Centigor, Morgor the Shadow Gabe, and a Brave Shaman Lore of Death. So, well, yeah. Right off the bat, you can see the Deepwood Scouts firing in here. Um, you know, it's not the best to be shooting low tier shielded infantry, but they gotta shoot something, right? And uh, certainly, these light infantry will take some good damage from those bows. So yeah, they're going to be able to do a little bit of work there. You can see the uh, Dryads sort of moving into a position as well. Orion does have Horn of the Wild Hunt, so we should be able to see some really good charge action with three units of Wild Riders especially. That's uh, potentially some very heavy charge action. But you can see the Dryads already getting in here, uh, just absolutely wrecking these low tier Ungors. I say absolutely wrecking. They're doing a good amount of DPS, and the fact that they cause fear will also be pretty good against those uh, low-tier Beastman units. Deepwood Scouts also sort of uh, picking at the Centigors a little bit there. Likewise, Orion's throwing his spears, and oh, some really good damage on those Centigors. Orion's gonna nice get a no, nope. Decided not to javelin toss. Instead, he's gonna try and break the charge of the Sons of Goros here. Distracts them momentarily as the Hawk Riders are firing in from the air. We may see them charge down. But uh, looks like over here we're getting an engagement with, with Wild Riders. Uh, Fate of Buna going off. We've got Centigors in here. So this is a pretty uh, escalated engagement here. The Looks like the Warhounds were able to pretty effectively break the charge. But at the same time, the Centigors are taking a ton of damage there. The Fate of Buna in response. The Deepwood Scouts are now getting just hunted by Harpies. And this was obviously a big danger uh, taking these ranged units against. And uh, this... This kind of a Beastman build, I guess, obviously didn't know that he was going to do this, but it looks like a Manticore Summon on the Wood Elf side. Going to be trying u trying to use the Wild Beasts against the Wild Beasts. And uh, yeah, those Wild Riders took a ton of damage. They're now going to face the mass of Harpies here, which could potentially be dangerous. Harpies actually don't have... Um, they, they count as infantry models, it's worth noting. So against like the Eternal Guards, for example, they won't be getting their bonus. They do count as a small entity size, so like the War Dancers will have a bonus against them, which is kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, doing some great damage to those uh, Wild Riders, able to chase off some of the Deepwood Scouts as well. Two units of Wild Riders down, so... Uh, pretty good stuff so far for the Beastmen, but likewise, they have taken a lot of damage. Centigors uh, tattered all across the field, the Hounds are routing off, and the Beastmen infantry just isn't really going to hold up a lot here. This is also a pretty bad, bad loss right here. The Manticore is able to swoop down and just take down that Bray Shaman very quickly, terrify him away, and actually shatter him. So that's pretty rough, but uh, this mass of Harpies here is still online. They're, uh, you know all angry flappy ladies and they're gonna get in here and try and get some work done hawk riders standing and shooting for the time being but it looks like the manticore uh this is a little bit honestly dangerous for the manticore i think because he doesn't have the most armor in the world uh manticore's only got like what 45 armor uh harpies do a lot of damage they have 44 44 weapon strength to pop so they can potentially do a lot of damage to that manticore although the terror obviously will be quite strong Another Manticore summon coming up with Orion kind of standing in the pocket like a like an old school NFL quarterback just uh, chucking those spears wherever need be. Looks like uh, Morker is surrounded by Dryads which is rough for him. But yeah those Harpies starting to take some damage and the, the terror from the Manticore definitely able to kind of pull through there. Uh, I thought the Manticore might get taken out by the Harpies, but it looks like the Harpies were maybe focused on the Hawk Riders instead who did take a ton of damage there. Looks like they might get routed off, but yeah. Harpies uh, not being immune to psychology, I don't think, yeah, they're one of the only units on the Beastman roster that doesn't have that uh, Primal Fury buff, so they don't get the immune to psychology that uh, these other units get while they have that active. 
Obviously, they don't have the best leadership in the first place, so since it is a leadership-dependent trade, it might not be super impactful anyway. But over here, uh, Ryan's going to start working on Morgar. I uh, haven't seen any Chaos Spawn summons yet, so it looks like we're now going to get a summon here to uh, try and take down these Dryads. Horn of the Wild Hunt being popped. I had uh, missed it earlier, but he actually did pop it on a really nice mass counter charge there, right around when the uh, Wild Riders took that engagement out on the flank. But uh, yeah, very nice use of the Horn of the Wild Hunt once again. Uh, these Wild Riders able to get in, take advantage of that buffed up charge bonus, do a ton of damage to these Chaos Spawn. The uh, Manticore also swooping down in here, trying to take down Morker. Yeah, this one unit of Wild Riders was held in reserve. They did get caught out a little bit, took some damage early on, but uh, yeah, they're still pretty healthy, all things considered. The Mass Harpies, uh, there, there's still one unit of Harpies relatively healthy as well. Some regrouped Centigors also. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Manticores have just about crumbled away. The, the degeneration on them is just so slow, though. They're going to be able to do a lot of work. And at this point, you can see the balance power is tilting a little bit more considerably in the favor of the Wood Elves there. So a very nice use of a sort of non-traditional Wood Elf build. Not even any healing, which is quite rare, honestly, these days for the Wood Elves. But uh, Manticore Summon, we've got uh, with Orion here and that use of the Horn of the Wild Hunt. Manticores do have a pretty good charge bonus as well. 50 charge on them, so I really like the use of the Horn of the Wild Hunt to uh, help there. Obviously, Beastmen are not great against Terror either, so if you can have those two Terror-causing monsters up at the same time across the field, sort of spreading it around, it definitely helps. These Wild Riders took a rough situation there, though. They just charged some Hounds and got rear-charged by those Centigors, so that's not the best. Those Centigors definitely getting the better of that engagement there. But uh, at this point, it's all just a matter of taking down Morgher. Once he's gone, the rest of the Beastmen forces should be able to should be cleaned up relatively easily. So yeah, you can see those war dancers didn't end up taking a whole lot of damage. The harpies were able to do a lot, but unfortunately, it just wasn't quite enough. At the end of the day, the war dancers were going to cut through pretty much all of those beastmen infantry anyway. So that was going to be a bit tough. The other chaos spawn summon now has been pulled up from a tattered unit nearby. But uh, yeah, might have actually been the manticore, the first one. But anyway. It's just a matter of time before Morgur gives up the fight, so we'll continue to soak up some cinematics of uh, the Manticore chewing on some of these beastmen here. Wardancer is also, uh, also getting some work done. Here come the Wild Riders from the side, going to be getting another nice charge here. Juiced up with Horn of the Wild Hunt up to a hundred charge bonus, which is absolutely insane. And keep in mind, guys, that charge bonus applies to both melee attack and weapon strength. And it fades linearly over, I think, 13 seconds, I want to say. So, you know, on that initial impact, they're hitting for 135, you know, melee attack with 142 weapon strength. Just an insane amount of damage. I'm loving the Horn of the Wild Hunt right now. I think it's a super fun item. And, uh, yeah, we used a very good effect here. Morker is still somehow holding his leadership together, despite the fact he's been surrounded pretty much this whole time. And that's it. It's just the one spawn left. He's getting... Stabbed at by uh, all sorts of spearmen. He falls, and that's a victory for the Wood Elves. Taking down their hated foe, the Beastmen. Especially Morgur the Shadow Gave. So a very, very thematic matchup. A big thanks to Aerocrastic for sending that one in. And for, uh, to Sladex for playing in there. Again, be sure to check out Aerocrastic's channel. In terms of the army breakdown here, 133 kills for the War Dancers. Like I said, there was some things that could have challenged them. If they had got, like, mass charged by a ton of Centigors and Harpies all at the same time, they would have, you know, got cleaned up pretty quickly, I think. But other than that, I don't know. There wasn't a lot of tools to deal with them on the Beastman roster here. Uh, obviously, they were going to do very well against all these Spearmen herd, and they did. Uh, Eternal Guards doing okay as well. 73 kills on Orion's not too bad. The Wild Riders, two of them, 85 and 93 kills, did an excellent job. Overall, just great work with the Wild Riders and the synergy with Orion there. 46 kills, XP Chevron for the Hawk Rider. Meanwhile, for Slade, uh, all these Harpies had their Chevrons to begin with, but two of them managed to pick up another XP Chevron through the course of the battle with 57 and 29 kills. Probably a lot of those are coming against those two units of Wild Riders that were out on the flank. Uh, which is very good work. Uh, the Centigors, one of them able to get 61 kills and 2 XP Chevrons, which is also pretty good stuff. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, just a lot of Wood Elf uh, mass here. And uh, yeah, 
It was a, it was a pretty interesting one. Definitely, it's, it's hard to say. I think the Manticores are really what pulled it out for Aerocrastic. Just having that terror spread across the field, being able to terrify away, especially the Harpies. The Harpies were going to be an absolute menace, and if they were able to kind of stick around, granted, the War Dancers, again, with their bonus versus infantry, they will cut through Harpies extremely quickly because harpies don't have the best melee defense in the world but still a very fun build from uh, both players hope you guys enjoyed watching that one if you do like the sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification button so every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time